All right, so so we'll, here we have um, a list of uh, of websites that we just we uh, we just retrieve for a particular user. Let's just create a couple more, just just so that we have uh, some something interesting. W six. Uh, let's remove the breakpoint here, and remove that breakpoint there, and continue. Uh, and there we have W six. It create just one more. W seven. There it is. So we have three three websites. Uh, and, but we like to be able to display here maybe the user information on, on, on who this person is. Okay. So for instance, uh, in the in the client side, the uh, website list, the website do we have it here? Website list, we don't. Okay, so the website list view somewhere here, website list view. Uh, we would like to be able to display here uh, not only the name, but also uh, maybe we can display here. Uh, the created, okay, well, that, that, that might be nice, but we have that information, actually. Right? We have that information. Uh, why was it a display? Probably because we, there it is, created. Okay? Uh, so let's, let's, let's display here the created. All right, that's easy. We have that already. Uh, that's under website. Um, the schema is called date created. Right? So this could be date created. There it is, June, June 7, 2017, meaning today. Right? Uh, or we could, might be a little more verbose. We can say uh, format short. So there it is. So today and the and the timestamp when it was created. Okay. Uh, but the other thing that we might want to display here is a user. Uh, and right now the only thing that we have here is the user ID, right? Not a date. And so we're gonna maybe name this not access but uh, maybe developer. Developer. So we have the ID, right? The nice thing would be to display actually the username uh, of the person who actually created that, but we don't have that, right? We only have the primary, the, uh, this is basically a foreign key, right, to some object that lives in a different collection, yes? Right, so how could we go about doing that? So one way uh, to do it uh, is to, in the model, right, uh, when we retrieve, uh, when we retrieve all the websites for user, Right, this is going to be a collection, right? It's going to be returning several, uh, several of these things, right? right so what we could do is that uh, these, these, uh, these finder methods, when we retrieve fun uh, data from, from the server, we can add additional transformations, right? Uh, we could, we could um, uh, create aggregations, like compute the maximum, the minimum, um, do, do all sorts of things that, you know, same thing you would do in, in SQL, right? Once you get a collection or, or a result set, uh, you can you can add um, you know aggregation functions right that allow you to calculate a single element from uh, from from these kinds of we're not going to do that just yet uh, instead what I'd like to be able to do is do the closest thing we have to a join in uh, in in NoSQL in NoSQL there are no joins right in in the sense that uh, we think of in uh, in relational databases right in relational databases uh, you have a foreign key and a primary key that relate to one another and you say well join on this key. Right, where this is equal to that, where the foreign key of this one is equal to the primary key of that one, right? And what it will do is that you know for each one of these, we will iterate for all all the other elements that match, right? And then it will fetch uh, um, fields from both, right? We don't have that. The closest thing we have that here is a uh, is a function called populate, right? And what populate does is that uh, hey, uh, I have a field in there that is a reference, right? Uh, and the field is called underscore user. Okay, uh, and uh, so what I'm asking you to do is that I want you to convert right this ID into its actual instance, right? That is that is that is uh, um, uh, is referenced uh, in some other collection with this ID, right? This is not supported by native MongoDB, right? This is a abstraction layer on top of MongoDB. Right, that is implemented by mongoose. So this mongoose is providing this this uh, this abstraction layer, okay, uh, that that allows you to navigate from one collection to another collection, okay. Uh, so so we can do that. We can say dot populate, and we can say exec. So uh, so uh, um, mongoose allows you to uh, string together several transformations, right? Uh, here we're only using just one transformation. Uh, but you can string together several, like sort, um, like order, or you can do all sorts of things, right? And you can string them together one one at a time, 
uh, after you're done, you know, stipulating all the transformations that you want, right? There is an exec, exec function that says, okay, go ahead, right? Uh, you know, uh, execute all the transformations that I've given you, uh, and then and, and and go out to the server and you know, database and do all these things. Okay. Uh, all right. So there it is. It's going to populate. Now, if we restart the server, we go back and we and we inspect. Well, let's bring that this down over here. And we do a, uh, a refresh and we look at the network. There's a list of websites. There's three websites, right? We have those three websites right there. Uh, but if you notice, right? If you notice, notice that the underscore ID is no longer just a primary key. See that? It's no longer a foreign key. It's an actual object, right? That has all the information for that uh, for that object that was uh, stored in a in a separate uh, collection. See that? Uh, so now that we have it, right? Notice that uh, here we are we are rendering the user object, the underscore user. See that is is no longer just the ID, right? It's the entire thing, right? So we can filter it out, and in the list we can say that uh, we want to display uh, in the developer. We want to display maybe a dot underscore user is no longer an ID. We can say dot username in there. See that? All right. So that we can refresh, and there we have the 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 the, the ID. The, the user uh, object. See that, right? Uh, now this can be uh, uh, this this can be taken further. Say the the user has references to other things, right? Uh, has references to my wish list, uh, references to uh, if people I'm following, right? They would also be part of that object, right? Uh, you can still populate. You can populate uh, and give it a fully qualified path that you want to populate. You know, starting at the underscore user, follow my wish list or follows, right? Follow and, and, and go all the way down, right, to you know to each one of the of the foreign keys, right, and populate a, a particular path, right? Okay. Now, uh, uh, depending on the version of, of Mongoose and version of MongoDB, uh, the levels at which you can go down and keep joining and populating further pointers is limited, right? Um, uh, I, I think you can you can go down you know like like you know six or seven levels down right it used to be that you can only populate just one level down right you couldn't just keep following pointers right uh, yes uh, you want to reduce this as much as possible <laughs> this is very expensive yes yeah. yes yeah you can you can um, <clears throat> here you can specify the fields that you want, right? That you only want the username, you only want the first name, you only want the last name, right? Um, and, and, and specify the, the fields that you want. Yeah. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back right after this. <laughs>